On this edition of Radio KDA TTE, I'm going to demonstrate the receipt of radio traffic. <laughs> going to receive a radio message using voice procedure. We're going to be doing this on HF, which is to say shortwave. We're going to be using single sideband, and we're going to be recording that by mill, which is to say typing it. I'll actually be recording it into a, uh, a computer-based system. So as you see the, what I'm typing, you're going to hear the audio as it's coming through, and you're going to get an understanding, number one, of what kind of conditions we're dealing with when we're using HF, two, how we can use voice procedure to make sure that we hear what we are supposed to be recording, and number three, how the receiving station is going to be able to use voice procedure to get clarification of the traffic so that when it comes in, it is correct. We're going to hear a couple of little mistakes that happen as we are going through this process. It's perfectly normal and not a big deal. I will, because this is a training video, point those out. And I'm also going to point out some problems with my own audio that I didn't know about until I listened to the uh, audio recording. So I'm going to be fixing those problems as well. All right, so the first thing that we can see is that I've got my uh, screen ready to go, and you'll notice that I have recorded the time on the left side and also the net that I'm on. Uh, if it's not a net that I'm normally on, I would also have something like the frequency or some other kind of information, and then to the right of the name of the net, I have the identification of the net control station. As others were joining the net and listing traffic for my station or that I was paying attention to for whatever reason, I would record the station that joined the net as well as what traffic they have that I was paying attention to. Uh, this is going to help me when it comes time for me to make the calls and to record that traffic to keep track of who had what and so on. So we can see that's going on right now. And uh, let's turn up the audio and uh, copy along. KDA TTE, you are weak readable. Over. I'm ready. KDA TTE. Whiskey 8, Juliet, Tango, Whiskey, 
seven. Marietta, August first. Kilo Delta eight, Tango Tango Echo break. Okay, letter group Charlie India Romeo project. Zero figures two zero objective figure five road work occurring on state route figure seven between Marietta and Two words, North Junction, in the more. Five whiskey eight, you're at Tango Whiskey. I uh, say again, word before junction. Moore's Junction, I spell Mike, Oscar, Oscar, Romeo, Echo, Sierra. Confirm Mike, Oscar, Oscar, Romeo, Sierra. Over. Uh, Echo, Sierra. Thank you. And uh, confirm signature Whiskey 8, Juliet Tango Whiskey. Over. That's confirmed. That's Roger. Roger 5, thank you. Keith, Katie 8, TTE. Thank you. Kilo 8, Kilo Romeo Alpha, this is Kilo Delta 8, Tango Tango Echo, radio check over. Kilo Delta 8, Tango Tango Echo, K-A-K-R-A, -A. I'll copy. You are good readable, I'm ready. Please copy number 801, routine. Kilo Echo 8, Kilo Uniform Victor, A-R-L-7. I'm sorry, correct that, the A-R-L-8. Cincinnati, Ohio. August. Uh, uh, he has one KDA 
T-T-E. He says he does not copy T-T-E, and he's having a hard time hearing you, KC-8-W-H. This is KD8TTE. I have KC8PBU weak readable. Over. One of the things that we see here is an example of how a typographical error can creep its way into something that is sent by voice. In this case, we're talking about Wyandotte County, 
and I did not spell it correctly. I also did not challenge the station that was sending the traffic because I thought that I knew how to spell Wyandotte County. There are two common spellings for that word, and uh, I chose the wrong one. The reason I did not challenge the station, however, is because I can look up how to spell Wyandotte County. That is what I did, and I made the correction in my copy of the traffic before I filed it. So here's an example of the message as it sits now on my station and filed. And you can also compare that with how it would look if I were to put that into a radiogram form. As I have said before, I do not recommend copying the traffic to the form itself simply because if something goes a little bit sideways, it's very difficult to recover from that situation. On the other hand, if you're recording to blank paper, if you're copying by stick, which is to say writing it down, uh, then it becomes a lot easier just to write things in wherever they need to go, or you can make corrections. Um, you can do the same thing when you're typing. Just continue typing, continue recording, and then you can figure out later what exactly it is that you're recording and putting it in the right place. That's not something that you can do easily when you're dealing with a pre-printed form on a computer. So I hope this has been a useful demonstration of how to receive traffic as well as how a traffic net operates. You could hear examples of stations joining the net listing traffic. You were able to hear examples of me calling one station to receive traffic, then another. You were able to hear an example of where I was not able to hear net control and my directions. Net control was still in charge of the net. I didn't break in and keep asking what was going on or anything like that. I simply waited for net control to take charge of that situation. Net control calls me. I don't answer. Net control calls somebody else to call me until we're able to establish contact. So these are all important procedures that when they come together make for effective operation of a traffic net. I hope you've enjoyed this video as well as the others. Please do subscribe and watch for future videos, and also like the video and share it with others if you find it to be helpful. This is KD8TTE, out.